It is my great pleasure to introduce our second distinguished guest for this morning. Leonard Vols is with the Journal of European Psychology Students in the Netherlands. And uh, let me first check. Leonard, are you there? Can you hear me and see me? Yes, I can hear and see you. Fantastic. Very good. Here. The Journal of European Psychology Students, is it JEPS, Leonard, or J-E-P-S? What do you prefer? Uh, JEPS. JEPS. Okay, just wanted to check. JEPS is a student-run journal providing an opportunity for bachelor's and master's students to gain publishing experience. Today, Leonard's talk entitled The Journal of European Psychology Students, A Decade of Student-Organized Scientific Publishing as Peer Education, really centers around the journal's founding ideals, how it develops, and how JEPS implements open science in, public in publicizing student research, and specifically, how peer education can add value beyond a traditional university education. So, Leonard, quick question. If I'm not mistaken, you are in the beautiful city of Amsterdam, correct? Yes, correct. Could you tell us maybe a highlight? You mentioned in our in our uh, in our warm ups that you arrived in Amsterdam in the in the lockdown and haven't had a chance to explore so much. But still, anything you're looking forward to exploring, shall we say, in Amsterdam? Uh, I guess just in general, the city. I've I've heard it's pretty nice so far. It feels quite empty, but I hear that that's usually a bit different. Um, but yeah, I think just exploring the city in general um, when that's hopefully possible again. Well, I can just say enjoy the uh, the empty streets because I'm sure once things do get better with Corona and that will happen soon, the crowds will be back. So enjoy the peace and quiet in Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah, a very unique so experience. Good. Then without further delay, Leonard, the digital stage is yours. Yeah, uh, yeah thank you. Um, OK, there, there's me. Um, yeah, I have the honor to quickly present the Journal of European Psychology students to you um, and try to incorporate a couple of points um, about open science and student research and connect that to open uh, education principles as well. Um, and then kind of touch on the um, challenges we face as a student-run uh, outlet for publishing, which might be familiar to, uh, to many of you um, in open science or in other open science initiatives as well. Um, yeah, just quickly to me, I am a, a research master student at the University of Amsterdam right now. Um, just started earlier um, this semester, so uh, last, just last year. Um, my focus is on statistics and methodology more broadly, and kind of in my free time, I am somehow somehow got interested in open science publishing um, and been doing that for a couple of years now as well. Um, to quickly start off, I would like to quick, uh, introduce JEPS, uh, what we do. So uh, we are a scientific journal um, that is fully run by students uh, in order to publish research by other students. Um, specifically, as David already said, uh, on the level of bachelor's and master's students. So that's kind of um, the focus here. And um, we focus on psychology. That's kind of where our background comes from. Um, at, but we also publish research from adjacent fields, which kind of connect to psych psychological questions, be it neuroscience, behavioral or economics, um, and but on the other hand, also kind of open science questions around um, research. Uh, we have a couple of papers uh, that that look at um, uh, how, kind of from a more meta perspective, how research is is done in in psychology. Um, and yeah, we publish both empirical research and literature reviews. Um, and we're also happy to uh, publish registered reports since 2016 as uh, I think the only student journal um, that does that. Um, yeah, and uh, JAPS is part of the uh, European Federation of Psychology Students Asso Associations, um, which is the umbrella organization of national students organizations in psychology. So we do have access to a larger network of uh, students all over Europe, um, which is also nice in doing what we do. Um, but yeah, we kind of want to start off with the foundation. So JAPS uh, now exists since 20, uh, 2009, so a bit over a decade by now, kind of already 12 years, time flies by. Uh, <laughs> And uh, yeah, there's kind of th this question of why is there a need for, for JEPS or um, student journals in general? And I think those connect very closely to uh, open access principles where um, 
as um, as this, uh, student research often, uh, or specifically was, but still is, is of, uh, often lost in the abyss, so to say, not accessible to others, kind of just on, on some local um, computers. Um, and which is unfortunate because oftentimes students conduct interesting research, uh, conduct high quality research, and uh, there are considerable benefits to that being accessible as well to other students, but also to um, the research community more broadly. Um, and on the other hand, this work then also goes unrecognized by the community at large. And that's at least to me, one of the key aspects of open science, that it sh the effort you put into scientific uh, research should be recognized as a valuable contrib contribution specifically for um, early career researchers as well. Um, and another important thing there is that uh, public publication as one of as a very crucial step in the research process is probably uh, the thing that is touched on in uh, curricular edu uh, education the least you seldomly go this last step of actually getting your work out there um, and we feel like this is important to provide to students um, and yeah and then lastly just as, as a quick utilitarian point, um, it is also a, a career opportunity being able to get published uh, for um, application processes, for example, for uh, PhD applications after your master's to have some um, evidence of research activities and uh, writing skills. So, uh, yeah. Um, so that's kind of why there is this need. Um, but I now want to touch on how, how we do this specifically. Um, because there, of course, are some uh, issues around publishing student research, given that the experience is not that uh, often, just not that pronounced yet. Um, and how we implement that is specifically with a two-stage review process where we, we divide it into kind of what we call technical review and content review. A technical review, which is done by our editorial board, which I'm uh, as editor-in-chief in JEPS uh, currently heading, um, which consists of uh, students on both bachelor's and master's level who do a initial um, review kind of looking at does a manuscript um, comply with our um, publishing criteria and give uh, content feedback as as well as we can to improve the manuscript to a uh, stage where uh, we feel like it's ready to uh, go into a proper peer review process where we as student editors then hand over to our associate editors, usually um, PhD students or um, kind of uh, research at the postdocs stage. However, that's called in the specific countries. Um, and uh, they then handle the actual peer review where the, the manuscript then, as, as you're all, all aware of, kind of gets, gets out to external, external reviewers and they then make the editorial decisions. So uh, that um, hopefully then uh, leads to a uh, period process that is as uh, as good in um, as with any other journal um, possibly uh, even even better since th there are just more eyes looking carefully over the manuscript given there there are two stages um, yeah and so that also provides, Kind of an opportunity for, for us to engage with ECRs beyond the student level, it kind of provide this opportunity for PhD students to gain some editorial experience, which they might otherwise only have at a later um, point of their career as well. So that's another nice educational benefit there. Um, yeah, and then I quickly want to touch on a couple of benefits students then gain from publishing. And uh, again, kind of to what I touched on already is kind of this aspect of dissemination of research. It is openly accessible, more visible since we kind of have this network. Um, and it's also been indexed in scientific databases, which uh, helps it being accessed by other researchers as well. So that's a pretty important uh, in, in its own right. But on the other hand, for students specifically, it's a, a considerable learning experience. Um, kind of doing research or kind of learning about research by doing it, practically applying it, kind of going through this whole process uh, with publishing as well, gives you much more um, possibility to engage with the different steps. And then also 
through the peer review, get some feedback on what you're doing, how you can improve. Um, and on the other hand, also kind of provides this education about the publishing process, which you w uh, oftentimes wouldn't get in uh, other circumstances as a student. Um, and hopefully that's what we're trying to implement more and more also uh, various other open science practices, kind of gaining experience with data sharing, for example, which is uh, something, again, you wouldn't consider as a student if you didn't try to get your research out there. Um, but the most important point there for, for me at least is uh, that this gives an opportunity for uh, early career research to start off early with properly going through the whole research process, gaining the necessary research skills for a, um, to do good research and do it up practically as well. So uh, on the other hand, then also not uh, hopefully not learning some practices they later need to unlearn um, when you suddenly meet other challenges in open research, uh, kind of in an open research environment, um, which specifically with uh, if you have supervisors that are not as op uh, as open towards uh, open science practices, might be an issue. Um, and the last point there is also a kind of more personal notes. Um, it's also noticeable how former editors within JEPS are active within open science co communities and try to, st to actively strive towards promoting open science more broadly, which uh, is pretty nice, uh, nice to see. And uh, we hope to create this community as well. Um, yeah, kind of to uh, more concretely on open science practices, I think one of the kind of, again, one of the founding principles, uh, what is open access. Um, JEPS has been an open access journal since its uh, inception, somewhat out of necessity, somewhat also to, like, it doesn't make sense to promote student research then, that then is not accessible uh, to other students. Um, but um, yeah, it's kind of in the spirit of everything being uh, accessible as well, which um, to, to students in many other contexts also becomes an issue as well. Um, and then with this purity process, we're by design also an, an open educational platform, kind of this, uh, it's very ingrained in how we do a uh, peer review that it's, uh, it is a learning experience. We don't have desk rejections because it, that's not something that makes sense in a student research context. So we rather go through iterative um, review processes to uh, um, get as much uh, um, educational value across to uh, the students who submit to us. Um, and that is kind of important, uh, kind of on the other hand also, because doing research for students specifically uh, means um, that every step is kind of new. You, you learn new skills along uh, every step of the process. Um, and yeah, then on the, uh, what I touched upon, er upon earlier as well, we are very proud to offer registered reports for students. Um, kind of specifically, again, this, this experience of pre-study con uh, conductance peer review. So you can actually gain some feedback on the process of your, your study um, by experienced researchers in the field. Um, and so on your plans, not uh, not gaining some, uh, getting some comments back on what you could have improved if you knew earlier on. Um, well, that is a great opportunity again for uh, students to get the most out of research pro projects like theses uh, as well. And we hope that that's uh, something we can uh, provide more broadly to students in the future as well. Um, and lastly, kind of it's uh, trying to continuously improve uh, kind of the specific open science practices and how we do publishing kind of uh, connected to open materials, open, um, um, open data, uh, open code where um, we try to uh, get that across as, as early as possible to students that it is op uh, open to share the entire research output. Um, you have um, both to be just tr transparent about the research you do, but also to provide valuable resources for other people trying to work with these, uh, potentially work with these materials as well. Um, but beyond that, we also try to uh, do this kind of aspect of peer education more broadly. Um, we as an editorial team uh, try to actively 
uh, do open science outreach, can reach uh, both within the uh, community of uh, EFSA, the, the federation and its 28 member countries. Um, uh, specifically right now uh, in, in this, con uh, this environment, it's much easier to, to uh, attend student conference, for example, and uh, give some workshops on open science practices. So that's uh, one of the benefits of everything being online right now. Um, but uh, also beyond this this network, trying to att attend conference, provide um, expertise, be uh, um, be partners for other st student organizations to uh, educate about open science specifically. We try to also through our separate blog, um, the Jeff's Bulletin, uh, provide resources on, on open science, um, both kind of. Uh, Community-wise, what are interesting open science initiatives? Um, kind of always uh, connected to psychology, of course, but more broadly as well, um, and just research skills in general. And then, lastly, we also try to have other collaborations um, on uh, with other student open science initiatives. Kind of, uh, I want to mention um, both SIAS here in Amsterdam and SOSIP, a um, German-wide network within psychology. Um, where we collaborated on projects in, in the past and hope, hope to do so in the future as well. Um, so that's kind of a beyond publishing, just trying to uh, create an active open science community um, with students. Um, yeah, but as I mentioned a few times already, there are a couple of challenges um, w um, in providing a publishing infrastructure as students um, and you might be familiar with some of them. I think one general issue is uh, an open science publishing infrastructure. So we are self-publishing, so we need to somehow provide a platform um, to be hosted. Um, and given that we have relatively little financial backing and are all volunteers um, as students also studying full-time on the side, uh, sometimes having other, other jobs or, or other engagements is, is hard and um, we kind of hope to uh, partner up with other uh, organizations there to make it more easy on ourselves to provide a better service for students. Um, but on the other hand, this kind of this volunteer status of uh, our enterprise um, also means that there's a high fluctuation in people who are responsible for the journal. Uh, kind of as a student, it's hard to be long uh, engaged in such a project, project for many years because at some point you just aren't a student anymore. Um, so that opens up a couple of questions around how do we keep expertise within the team, um, uh, even though the people in a change, like uh, expertise people, uh, individuals build up, uh, needs to somehow stay within the organizations. And that's specifically relevant to how we provide quality assurance and good feedback to students. Um, and how we are consistent in the principles we apply in our reviewing process. Um, and one way we try to do that is also through this two-stage peer review where uh, we have longer standing external reviewers or associate editors uh, oftentimes stay on for multiple years or people who were in the student editorial board then move on to being associate editors later on. So they are, um, are points of contact, but it's still kind of kind of the first point of contact always are our student editors and um, somehow need to have this internal education processes of how do we handle technical questions around around publishing. Um, but yeah, and then other crucial issues are around open science. Kind of how do we how do we uh, how do students have access to open science resources? Um, which is also kind of very different between countries um, and less privileged um, universities, for example. Uh, we do have a, at least nominal a, uh, APC, but many students don't have access to um, funding for publications. So we kind of more or less waive uh, most of our um, APCs in that context. Um, and then also, how do we reach students who, whose teachers might not be supportive or knowledgeable about open science practices and educate those students specifically? Um, but yeah, how do we, um, uh, how do we in general acquire this uh, expertise about um, uh, open science? And how do we have uh, our 
um, submitting students acquire knowledge about open science that often goes beyond the research skills you've learned within education. Um, yeah, so to quickly follow up on that, uh, what does that mean for what we have to do as a, as a service? So on the one hand, we need to, we want to improve our uh, direct service of the publishing experience for students um, by, yeah, and then more broadly, um, how do we implement open science practices, what I talked about beforehand in this process as well, but then beyond that, how do we more efficiently, more broadly than we already do, build a community about open science and promote open science um, to students in general um, in the context of psychology. And yeah, Let, let's start, start to jump in. Just wanted to give you the one minute warning because we have a lot of questions coming in there. Yeah, that is okay. why I'm at the summer. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, to quickly summarize, kind of, it is very important to promote and reward student research uh, and specifically open uh, student research. And we want to educate students by directly applying open research skills in that context. That's why we provide this platform. Um, and through that also then provide commitment for open science as early on in the um, scientific education as possible. But there are a couple of um, challenges in this enterprise uh, structural. So how do we design this for the uh, needs of students? Um, infrastructurally, uh, how do we implement uh, this design for students lastingly in a working uh, process? And then uh, as a last point, kind of how do we provide this education to students to be able to do op uh, open research uh, in a sound manner? Um, yeah, and then I have a last slide here. Uh, please do meet me at the Meet, uh, meet the Speakers event in 15 minutes. Um, and there are a couple of contact details on there as well, both kind of the Twitter of Jeps and also kind of a bit of self, reckless self-promotion uh, on the right side with my Twitter. Uh, you can also uh, see the link to our website, jeps.fsi.org, um, the direct link to our journal page. Um, and you can reach us via mail at uh, journal at fsi.org. So that's it from me. Happy to receive some questions now. Thank you very much, Leonard. Fantastic presentation. Um, just amazing how much we're learning this morning. We have a lot of questions, very little time, unfortunately, so I'll read the questions as fast as I can, and if you can, brief answers, and I'll make sure we get three or four in there. Uh, Leonard, the first one, great presentation. You said that the publication process is hardly ever taught in universities. I agree. Do you know any examples where it is taught? Um, I think there are increasingly are... Um... Uh, open science. Uh, there are there are some ways in which open science is taught, either kind of as part as part uh, uh, of courses or as separate courses. I know that we in our masters have this course, Good Research Practices, where we touch on open science principles and also specifically how these apply to publishing. Um, some other uh, courses often include kind of aspects on peer review. How would students do? do peer review within courses. So that's kind of touching aspects of the publication. But uh, I think that is something that needs to uh, be more pro broadly applied, kind of how does the research process uh, work specifically and kind of mm -hmm. how does it work infrastructure-wise as well. But definitely room, uh, room for improvement there. Yeah, understood. Next question from Ruth King. What services could publishers offer to support researchers with open science? Um, that's always an interesting question. Um, I'm not entirely sure how, like, I, I'm always skeptical about the role of publishers within this whole um, process. Um, but can I, I ask you why? why? Why are you skeptical about publishers? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, issues around the for profit. Uh, for, for profit publishing are probably more widely known. Um, I'm not entirely co convinced why this additional um, uh, step needs to be taken. Um, but yeah, uh, kind of beyond that, I think in the review process it would be uh, important to re uh, provide specific uh, 
expert review of open science practices, for example, code or um, a data review. I think that such checks uh, should be implemented. Um, on the other hand, I think just more more modern publication um, uh, portals would be nice as well, kind of being able to dynamically uh, implement um, data in, in websites because uh, we're kind of still running on a bit of an older uh, PDF based uh, publishing, which might not uh, be up to the needs of a modern, um, uh, yeah, modern science. But I think there are probably other people who might answer these questions better than me. Okay, fair enough. Time for two more quick questions. A scientific journal for students by students is such a great idea. Did you uh, did your interest in the journal lead to your interest in open science? If not, how did you first hear about open science as a concept? And I can only second that question because when I talked to a lot of colleagues and friends preparing for this, many people said, what a great idea. We never even heard about this. So how do we get the word out about that? Um, I, th I mean, for me, it went very hand in hand, uh, kind of this interest in in science kind of um or the scientific process as a uh very early bachelor students got me into this community that uh then also supported open science principles uh, more broadly so um yeah i think that's kind of the important thing um i think in general the reception of uh towards open science with, uh, with within the student community is relatively high as um if kind of there are certain processes that feel quite counterintuitive uh, early on, kind of how publishing is set up, um, which you then kind of grow to learn as being usual in the um, in the process, but uh, just aren't that intuitive early on. So I think there there is definitely some receptiveness, and if you can approach people early on, that um, definitely helps and. Uh, I think most students just want to do their research properly, want to read proper research, sound research, and I think open science helps in uh, providing that. So, um, yeah, I think just reaching out as early as possible. And I think that's one of the strengths as a student run uh, journal is that we kind of are on a more um, equal ground of engaging with other students and might understand the needs and uh, misconceptions of students. Uh, better than it might be through teachers, but it, of course it co complements each other. Mm. Okay, super. We have time for one final question here. A scientific journal, oh, excuse me, I did that one already. Let me continue here. <laughs> Do you have any success stories on how the students have benefited from the editorial experience? Has this introduction to open science practices changed their views on deciding where to publish their work in the future? Mm. I must say no concrete experience because that's unfortunately not like, not something we properly uh, ask students in our process yet. The kind of following up on the uh, career tra trajectories of students uh, is definitely something we would like to do more in the future. Um, but at least uh, uh, um, some feedback we get is that uh, is that the peer review process is very educational to students, also by supervisors that. Uh, it is a, high, a highly professional um, peer review uh, process they uh, go through. And I think it's, again, kind of this being in, in this process for the first time just gives you so many uh, so many things you're learning about that, that definitely is an educational process for students. Um, and hopefully by providing uh, as much open science in that as we can, we hope to uh, guide students toward uh, doing that later on as well. But yeah, um, we'll have to see about that in the future, I, I suppose. Fantastic. Leonard, first of all, I wanted to thank you for a great presentation. As a tradition, we want to give you a virtual applause from around the world. Super job. Uh, there were still a few questions that we couldn't get to. Um, I can only say I apologize. There, there are so many fascinating questions and comments uh, on this subject, but uh, the people will have a chance to speak to you as well as the other speakers and posters and even with each other with other participants 
in the upcoming um, speaker's corner, meet the speaker's box, which starts in a few minutes. 